QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Manual Payroll Setup. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in the prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. In the view dropdown, we've got the hide icon bar and open windows lists checked off. Open windows open on the left hand side. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial, let's open up the profit and loss, the P and L, change the range from 010122 to 123122. And then I'm gonna customize it and we'll go to the fonts and numbers, changing the font up to 12, okay, yes, and okay. One more report for the balance sheet, reports drop down, company and financial. This time we're gonna be looking at the balance sheet standard i'm going to customize it up top then change the range from 010122 to 123122 and fonts and the numbers to change it to 12 okay yes and okay so let's go back to the home page and now we want to focus in our our employees in prior presentations We've been setting up our beginning balances, imagining that we had a prior accounting system, and then we're moving into the QuickBooks system, and we installed or put in place the customers, the vendors, the accounts, and the beginning balances. Now we wanna think about the payroll process. Note that you wanna make sure that you consider the payroll process carefully before you start payroll, because payroll is one of those areas where I would use the adage of you would like to measure twice, cut once, rather than the adage I'm, I'm gonna tinker with something until I get it right. Because tinkering with it can be kind of costly and time consuming with regards to the payroll process. So if you've never had payroll before and you're just turning on the payroll in your QuickBooks system, then the question would be, do you wanna run payroll within QuickBooks? Or do you want to run payroll with a third party provider that's going to be doing some of the payroll processing? If you run it within QuickBooks, then most likely you're going to want to have some level of paid payroll to be running because the paid payroll gives you some double checks to help safeguard against making errors when you're processing the payroll, helps you to do the human resources stuff like give the paycheck stubs and to do the reporting requirements for the quarterly reportings, for example, 941s, year-end reporting, the 940 and the W2s and the W3s and so on. And it's also getting a better and better at the state stuff as well. However, you might wanna work with a third-party payroll provider. That's another option that you could use and they can take care of all that kind of stuff, hopefully help out with some of the reporting, human resources requirements and so on. Because remember that payroll if you didn't have the taxes involved, would be kind of like a vendor transaction. You would just be paying someone for service that would be done. You'd write them a check, no problem. But because there's all the withholdings and because you're giving those withholdings to the government and they've added the tax filing requirements, it can get quite complex with even a few uh, employees. So there is that. Now, if you had a payroll process in the past and you're transferring it into QuickBooks, then usually you would like to be able to make the transfer like at the beginning of the year. So you have a whole year's worth of data of, of payroll in one place, or at least you make the transfer, you know, at the end of the quarter, if you're doing quarterly filing, it's because there's going to be caps and things that you have to worry about with regards to payroll. So it's not too bad to transfer uh, at the end of the year or to start a new year, but to transfer in the middle of the year gets kind of complex because of the reporting of the pay stubs on a year-to-date basis for all the employees and so on. 
So we're just going to turn on the payroll and then we're going to have to, of course, set up our employees. This is a whole process in and of itself. So we have other uh, courses on just payroll if you want to get into that in more detail. But we're going to be using the manual payroll for the practice problem. So if we go to the edit drop down preferences and edit, we turned on the payroll by going to the payroll settings, which is right here. And then in the company preferences, here's your payroll options. We turned on the manual payroll when we went through the preferences in a prior presentation and that when we turned it on, we saw this arrow then came through down here and we had the pay employees icon, which would not be there if you didn't have any payroll on. Manual payroll is a great tool for the practice problem, but not one you would typically want to use in practice when running live because in a practice problem, it actually forces you to do some of the calculations, which might give you more of an awareness of what is happening, but it's more likely that you can do math errors. No one calculation in payroll is all that complex, but because there's so many of them and because you have reporting requirements, it gets complex just due to the amount of calculations involved. So some support through paying payroll within QuickBooks or by having a third party payroll is quite useful. I'll go through these quickly because we saw them when we went through the preferences, but you got the pay stub and voucher printing. So this is the information that's gonna be kind of on the pay stub. Note that from a human resources standpoint, you have to do the withholdings, you have to pay the employees obviously, and you also have to tell them the withholdings that you made, what they had gross, what they took, what you took out of the paycheck, and what they made net. And then we got the sick and vacation options. So we're not gonna change or add any sick and vacation. We're just gonna be running the basic payroll. And then you got copy earnings detail from the previous check. I'm keeping the default settings here. Recall quantity field on paychecks. I'm gonna keep that as the default. Recall our field on the paycheck for the hourlies employees. I'll keep the default. Job costing and item tracking for paycheck expenses. We'll keep that on as well. And then you got the changing employee name. So you got you got the first name display employees. How are what's going to be the order that the employees will be displayed. And then you got the employee defaults, uh, mark new employees as sales reps. So I'm going to keep that off here. So there we have them. And then these defaults right here would give us the default items that we would be setting up and our pay period. So we've got the schedule, I'm just going to set the default for our pay period. And this should be the default for all employees. And I'll leave everything else until we actually add the employees. So typically, we can pay people daily, which isn't too common, weekly, bi weekly, semi monthly, these two things are not exactly the same. Because if you pay people twice a month, there's 12 months, so you're going to pay them 24 times, if you pay them bi weekly every two weeks, if you take 52 weeks in a year divided by two, then you're going to come up with I think 26 uh, payments. So they're not exactly the same monthly or quarterly. Let's do it for us. We're going to do it monthly because that'll work for our practice problem. I'm not going to set anything else on the defaults right now. I'm going to close this out and say, okay, okay. And then we'll add the rest as we uh, enter some employees. So let's just add a couple employees right now. Now, no, just note that you're going to have payroll items and we're going to set up kind of the payroll items, which are in the list area, payroll items right here. And these are going to help us to, to set up the payroll. So notice some of them are in there by default, the Medicare, because that's a flat tax rate, the social security, the unemployment. So these can get somewhat complex. This is kind of like the behind the scenes that's helping to process the payroll in a similar way as the lists and item lists uh, for the inventory items are, are, this is the item list for things like inventory items, help us to process the forms for the sales and purchases of inventory, for example. All right, let's go back to the homepage. We're gonna go into the employee center, which you can do here, or you can go into the employee dropdown, employee center, and we'll just add a couple employees. I'm gonna do that by going to the new up top. And so here are our employees. I'm just gonna make up a couple here. We've got Adam Hamilton. Adam Hamilton, we're just gonna say that's our employee. This is information that you would get from the W-4 form, which would look something like this, right? We'd have our employee, we'd have them fill out the W-4 form to give us this information so that we can use it 
to populate the, the pay stubs, pay them properly, have the proper address and the reporting requirements and withholding needs as we enter it into the system. So that's the primary document you would be pulling this stuff from. So five, six, five, six, five, 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 five. I'm gonna say is the social security number, male is the gender, and we've got, I'm gonna say 090579 on the date marital status, I'm gonna say is single. And this is something that we kind of need to know at, at least when we get to the withholdings because that's gonna have, that could have an impact on the withholding citizens. We're gonna say yes, this is a human resources thing. So typically we need to say that they need to be a citizen and American in, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just, I'll keep that blank for now. And then we've got the disability. I'm gonna say no and W9 or an I9, I'm gonna say yes. Uh, and then I'm gonna say military. Here's an I-9 form, by the way, uh, form I-9, Employment Eligibility Verification Department of Homeland Security. So again, with payroll, you, we got some of these items here that aren't really an accounting component, but we're gonna have to deal with from you know a, a human resources kind of perspective as well. So it's not gonna have possibly an impact on the withholdings, which is gonna be our major calculation or our major thought process as we're processing the payroll but then you've also got to be in compliance with all the all the laws with regards to the payroll so u.s veteran i'm going to say no and then the address let's add the address i'm just going to make one up here it's going to be important to have one this is kind of a required field you'd get this from the w4 typically because it needs to be on the pay stub generally and you got to give the address to the government uh, as you're reporting generally so I'm going to say this, uh, dry, I just made this one up and I make them all from Beverly Hills just for the fun of it. California, that's not California, California 90210. So five, 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 seven, nine, one. It's a fake number. And then none of these are required fields. I'll keep them as is. Let's go to the additional information. So. Uh, account number let's keep that as is let's go to the payroll so this is the key difference between an employee kind of uh, intro screen as opposed to a a customer or a vendor so we've got the payroll so i'm going to keep that monthly is our default so notice it's setting up as monthly that's a key default because you would think all of our employees would be the same we're not typically going to have one employee on a bi-weekly and another one on monthly so the default will be monthly you've got your direct deposit information tax information sick stuff sick pay and vacation i'm going to add the item so if i hit the drop down we don't have any items set up these are going to be the types of pay typically the items will be like salary and hourly will be the major two kinds of items we're just going to set up as we go right now so i'm going to add the i'm just going to type in salary and then tab it will add the item. So now I'm gonna set up the item of salary, set it up, and we go through the little widget here. Do you want to set up a payroll item to track hourly wages, annual salary commissions, or uh, bonuses? We wanna do the annual salary. That's what we're gonna set it up as. So I'm gonna say, okay. Next, is this item for regular overtime, sick, or vacation pay? It's gonna be regular pay and then enter the name of the salary item it's just going to be called salary next and then enter the account for tracking this expense meaning when i process payroll what's the expense account that will be hit on the income statement payroll expense that looks good and so there is our salary item and then i'm going to say that she earns fifty-five thousand. Uh, now that's a year because we're on salary now. So if I open up the trustee calculator and I was to say, okay, 55,000, 55,000 divided by 12, because we're paying monthly would be this much per month we would expect, right? So there's gonna be our item, then direct deposit. We're not gonna set that up, but you can look into that if you got the direct deposit. And then the taxes is the other key component here. So we've got the form W-4, I'm going to say it's form W4 for 2020 and say you've selected 2000. Note the following before hire date of the employee must be on or after January 1st, 2020. I'm going to say OK. And so now we've got the filing status. Let's say the filing status, the filing statuses are 
single or married filing separately, married filing jointly, head of household or exempt. This is gonna have an impact on the withholdings. We would typically get this from the W-4. And then we've got two jobs only. Uh, so we'll keep that as unchecked and I'm not gonna fill out anything else here. I'm gonna just keep it as it is. Uh, claim dependence, other income, deductions, extra withholding, information you get from the W-4. Then we've got the Medicare, Social Security, all of our employees will typically be subject to the federal income, federal withholdings of federal income tax, Social Security and Medicare and the federal unemployment tax. And then we also might have state taxes that would be applicable. We also might have other voluntary uh, withholdings, which would be things like a 401k plan, health care and that kind of stuff. And then we've got the state side of things. If there is a state side of things, now the states will change of course depending on where you're located and so i said we're in california so we would have state implications but i'm going to try to keep it off because i want to keep it generic right now and major majorly or mainly have our focus on the federal side of things so i'm going to say uh, state work is not selected i'm going to just say continue and I'm just going to say, I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to try to keep the federal side of things to keep it generic. I'm going to say, okay, and continue and then, okay. So now we have our one employee, uh, Adam, uh, the other employee is Erica that we need to set up. So I'm going to say new employee, and then let's set up Erica. And this is, I'm going to say Smith is her last name. And we're going to say that the social security five, six, four, five, seven, four, nine, four, one female this is going to be 12 31 97 we're going to say that she is married and citizen yes i'm not going to do the ethnicity i'm going to say disabled no and then we got we got yes and no on the military status address is going to be at 9425 sunset boulevard in Beverly Hills, California, 90210-555-671-5174. Let's put some dashes in there. Dash, dash. So there's that. Let's go to the additional information. Let's go to the payroll information. So the default is gonna be monthly. That looks correct. We're gonna set up a new item. Let's make her hourly. Uh, just for contrast, so I'm gonna have to set up a new item because we don't have it set up yet. Tab, set it up. It's gonna be an hourly item, that looks correct. Regular pay looks correct. It's gonna be hourly, that looks correct. Uh, payroll expenses, that's the expense account that's gonna be hit, looks correct, finish it up. And so then we're gonna say the hourly rage will be, let's say it's $16, $16 for the hourly wage. And then we'll go to the uh, taxes up top, which we would get from the W-4. We're gonna, I'll make it to the 2020 or later again. I'm gonna say, okay. And we have, let's put married this time. This is information we get from the W-4. I'm gonna keep all this as the default. So two jobs only. If there are only two jobs total, uh, claim dependence, other income deductions, extra subject to Medicare, Social Security, federal income tax. I'm not going to do anything for the state to try to keep it generic, even though I'm in kind of California here. Continue. And I'm going to say OK and continue. So I'm not going to set up the sick pay or do anything else related to that. We'll keep it uh, basically generic and then employee information down below. We've got the higher date. Let's actually bring this back to January of 2022. We'll just do it at the beginning of the year. Original hire date, adjusted service date, release date, employee type, regular versus officer, statutory owner. This could help you to kind of sort your employees if you have a lot of employees by different categories. Full-time, part-time, seasonal, exempt. These are all fields that can help you kind of sort and organize your uh, employees total uh, supervisor so we'll keep that as is I'm gonna say okay and uh, it says do you wish to say no I'm gonna say leave as is to keep it generic let's edit this one I'm gonna right click and edit Adam again I thought I said did I set him up mail I set and then we'll set this to January so we can process payroll uh, 
actually we're gonna set it up January 2023. I'm working in 2020. I'm working in the future. I'm working in the future. So we'll do it right here. And I'll say okay, and then I'll change uh, Erica again. So let's edit this one. And where's her first name? Doesn't seem to be showing up. Print on paycheck. Why doesn't Erica Smith? Well, that was weird. And employee information. Let's make this 2023 January. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. We might have to do some touch ups, but okay. I see what's happening here. I'm going to double click on her again. I put her last name in the middle area and I don't know what, oh, I have a title. I see. Okay. So this is Erica Smith. Okay. So there we have it. Now I'm going to say, okay, there it looks good. All right. Now, if I go to my payroll lists or payroll items, you can see that we've added the items now of the hourly and salary. If we had sick pay, if we had other other uh, 401k and, and so on stuff that we have to withhold, we can have uh, more items here. So we again, we can get into that in a lot more detail. We could do whole courses on, on payroll and all the different options with regards to payroll, but that's where we'll leave it for now. And we'll get into more of it when we process the payroll as we get into the uh, next month of data input.